Hello, my name is Oratoria Pittman, and I would like to welcome you back. Uh, this is the second lesson in a four lesson series Bible study. Uh, today, this is a ladies only Bible study. And if you have five minutes, please join me uh, for encouragement in the scriptures. Mark 16 and 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Our purpose today is to encourage my sisters in Christ, discuss biblical topics, and spread the gospel to every person that will hear it. Men and brethren, we encourage you to visit my brother Steve Waller. He is the evangelist at the Hartley Bridge Road Congregation, and his information can be found below. Today, we're going to talk about the love that we should have for our sisters that are in the middle. Uh, last session, we discussed the necessity of our older sisters in the kingdom. Today, we will continue the series of family member categories. We have sisters that labor in the kingdom that are not in the elderly category, and they're not considered to be the young women or maidens. So um, we want you to know that you are essential, and we need you to know that you are loved. Um, I find myself uh, to be in the middle category at this time. Uh, so if you fit in the middle age group, uh, this lesson is for you. Uh, keep in mind the kingdom of Christ or the church is filled with our spiritual family members of all ages. Every single member is essential and will be discussed in our next set of lessons. Just all about love. Now, being a, a middle-aged lady, I find a lot of inspiration from Mary Magdalene. Uh, so today's inspiration will come from the life of Mary Magdalene. Uh, please note, though, uh, as a disclaimer, I am not saying that she's a middle-aged woman at all because we do not know her exact age. However, me, being a middle-aged woman, I find inspiration from her life. <laughs> so we'll look into the Old Testament and see how this woman handled injustice, trials and tribulations, and the joy that came with the good news. So Mary Magdalene is a great example of a woman who turned her life around and became a great disciple for Jesus. When we meet Mary Magdalene in scripture, we find great encouragement from her life. During the Mosaic time in history, she experienced a lot of personal trials, uh, trials and tribulations. Sometimes in life, we start off on one path and we may end up on another path. Um, there's many different scenarios and different life circumstances that can happen to us um, in this life. But her example is going to teach us that it does not, however you start, you don't have to end that way. You can actually write the end of your chapter. The inspired writers, Luke and Mark, they give an account of who Mary was. So Mary was a Jewish woman from the fishing town of Magdala on the western shore of the Sea of Galilee. The writer Luke recorded the healing of demons from Mary, <laughs> life circumstances. Um, there were Mary and there were a few others uh, in Luke 8 and 2, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary called Magdalene from whom seven demons had come out. Whatever circumstance led Mary to being enslaved by demonic spirits, it is what she did after being delivered is where we find our inspiration. So that's a prime example of whatever life circumstance that she found herself in originally, um, she did not stay there. She did not have a why me party. Instead, she dedicated her life to Jesus' mission, which was to please the Father. So immediately we see a change. After she is healed, she devotes her life and every aspect of her life to please the Father's mission here, which was to help Jesus. Our Christian mi mission, is, this is where we see the similarities in our mission today because we are tasked as Christians to continue the work of Jesus by spreading the gospel. That is not our only mission. We are to live our lives a living sacrifice. Uh, this means to give of our means and time to others. Um, the Mosaical Law, which was given to Moses on Sinai, the Bible recorded that Mary supported her fellow uh, Jewish brethren and helped in many different ways while being under the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law was given to the Jews at this time in history. All of the Jewish nation at this time were considered to be brethren. This is a type of bond, much like we are in the spiritual kingdom today. Only back then it was more so physical, and today ours is spiritual. So what can women do to help? In Luke 8, 2, and 3, it lists Mary Magdalene as one of the women who traveled with Jesus and helped support his ministry out of their own resources. Women can make items to encourage others who are in distress, give of their finances, 
speak encouraging words to others, teach women and children the Bible, and the list is endless. As mentioned in the previous video, women have a huge influence in this world. We must use our influence to love and to encourage and stir others up to good works as well. Finally, let us be encouraged to go uh, the extra mile with those of the household of faith. Um, you know, we must display sincerity and empathy like Paul taught in Romans 12 and 15. He said, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. That helps us to understand that we are to put ourselves in other people's perspective and, and, and their shoes to try to see how they're feeling. And we have to do everything we can to try to help. So Mary's life it, uh, reminds me of just an individual who went the distance. Mary and others uh, supported each other during the best and the worst of times in the Old Testament by speaking together. Those of us on this side of the cross have many means to communicate with each other, telephones, cell phones, internet, text messaging. There is nothing like your physical presence though. Sometimes just being present in times of struggle, distress, or sadness can make all the difference. Mary was one of the women and the friends who went the distance with the Lord on that tragic day of his crucifixion. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene, and that's found in John 19 and 25. There was nothing that they could have done to help, but just being present is a form of support. We will experience pain or loss sometimes, but we can keep working. Look at this example. Once the Lord was crucified, we still see the friends working together. In this scripture, we find them preparing for the body of Jesus and helping each other through their grief. Luke 23 and 56, and they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandments. So they were obedient, even though they were hurting. Through their grief and being stricken with their grief and mourning, they still obeyed the law, which teaches us today that we, we should always obey the law as long as it's in accordance with God. In perilous times such as these, we must do the same thing. We have a better covenant with Jesus, and his law is the perfect law of liberty. So under the rule of Jesus, there is freedom from sin. We can never allow our emotions to cause us to destroy property, hurt other people, or act out of character. We are Christians 24 hours a day. This would make us a slave to sin again if we don't uh, obey the law or if we hurt other people out of our grief or sadness. Uh, we have been delivered from that, so therefore we don't have to put ourselves back into slavery. Righteous anger for all sin, but sin not, okay? It's okay to be righteously mad about an injustice. The Bible says, be ye angry, but sin not. That's found in Ephesians 4 and 26. Quite naturally, when Mary thought that they had taken Jesus' body away, she was sad and probably mad. But observe what she did. John 20 and 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. She investigated the matter herself by looking to see if it was true that the body of Jesus was no longer in the tomb. Uh, so she didn't rely on what somebody told her. She went and investigated. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this time, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will go get him. Mary was determined to do what was right by getting the body of Christ, even if she had to do it herself. And then Jesus said to her, Mary, and she turned to him and just imagine the joy that she must have felt knowing that her savior was alive and well. It's the same joy as Christians that we experience knowing that Jesus reigns from the throne right now. Hear ye, hear ye, that is the good news. The good news is that Jesus is reigning on his throne. He arose. Right now, his kingdom was established around 33 AD, and he is able to deliver you from the bondage of sin. The good news is that Jesus uh, can help you. Uh, if you are currently not in the Lord's kingdom, there is room for you today. Uh, you must hear the gospel according to Romans 10 and 17. 
You must believe the gospel according to Hebrews 11 and 6. You must repent of your sins according to Luke 13 and 3. Confess faith in Jesus Christ according to Romans 10 and 10. Be baptized for remission of your sins according to Galatians 3 and 27. Remain faithful unto death according to Revelations 2 and 10. You can contact a church of Christ in your area. The elders are always standing by and would love to talk to you. I want to thank you for your time. And if you will, join me next time when I discuss the necessity of the young women in the kingdom. Have a great day and be blessed.